between 20 years, 20, 25 years, we will have the ability to simulate every single neuron in the human brain. And there will be a technological singularity. You could actually merge into a computer and live in a matrix. Like, <laughs> forever, if you want to do that. And by 2050, we will have the computational power to simulate every single human brain. Amazing thing is that you know, can send sensors out of space. I mean, like Google Glass, for example, right now, right? It's a way of, uh, you know, it's augmented reality, right? You know, I look at uh, Tony and I can see his LinkedIn details and his company page, everything else in there. Uh, but the thing is that they're talking about embedding that information, because right now your retina is processing the information, goes to your brain, the picture, the image, and linking it all up. They're talking about tying the information directly into the brain, so you actually will be able to smell, taste, and feel Tony. Sorry, my taste may be better. <laughs> um, you know, um, essentially, without actually being near Tony. Um, so, um, and, and for those of you who doesn't help, I really encourage you to read this book called Transcend. Uh, Ray Kurzweil takes about 168 vitamin tablets a day because he believed that, uh, you know, if he can prolong his life by at least 25 years, he will be able to live almost forever as technology improves. <laughs> and the reason why we age is because we were programmed genetically to age once we pass our sexual peak because that was actually better to pass your genes and your offspring, all the resources and for you to live on. But then now that we have abundant food and abundant, uh, you know, uh, 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 we have abundant uh, needs that we have uh, met with technology, we don't actually need to have that kind of uh, resource anymore. And therefore, about, you know, there's a way to reverse this uh, aging process and they're working on some of these techniques of I mean, uh, technology and a really interesting book to read. Uh, and then his latest book is How to Create a Mind. So Ray, those who don't know who he is, when he was 17 years old, um, he, he was very passionate, oh, he developed the first computer generated music and um, he then was very passionate about trying to let blind people access books. So he created the first machine for the blind. Um, he became a good friend of, um, he actually invented a CCD scanner uh, chip um, and also if you're using Siri, he's also, also using his technology from nuances and so on. Um, he became a good friend with Stevie Wonder, and Stevie Wonder then asked Ray, said, you know, was, Stevie Wonder was very grateful that he could now access books because of Ray's machine, so the blind. And he asked Ray, is there a way you could help me access musical instruments that I could not otherwise play because he's blind, right? Can he put it on a keyboard? A synthesizer was born, and that's why you see the Kutzwell brand and all the uh, music societies. That's his. So he recently took his first job ever, he's working for Google now, to create the first artificial brain. So, um, so this is a bit of exponential technology, thanks for the question, uh, Michael. So, uh, you know, I always give an example, I mean, you guys are super intelligent, so you probably know the answer already, especially if you've been in talk, but um, we are very, very uh, geared towards linear thinking. If I were to tell you that, um, you know, I take uh, one meter a step, in 30 steps I will be 30 meters away. If I take exponential steps, right, one step is a meter, second step is two, four, eight, keep doubling. In 30 steps, how far do you think you would have gone? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 26 times around the earth, we didn't need this. Okay, so that's what, how fast technology moves. Uh, even the Human Genome Project, which I normally talk in my regular talk, um, you know, the cost of sequencing the genes has fallen faster than more slow. It used to be a billion dollars 10 years ago, today it's about a thousand dollars and four hours. Okay, and why is this important? Uh, and, and I don't know whether you guys know too, like the Human Genome Project was deemed a failure because uh, it took 10 years. On a 9 year, they only sequenced 5% of the genes. Like, how in the world they going to do 95%? But that one year, the exponential growth hit in. Because, you know, just like a 3D printer, right? You, keep, you make one printer, uh, one printer can make two, two can make four, four can make eight. And, and the same thing with computational power and the exponential growth. The other guy is Peter Diamandis. Uh, he's most famous for, uh, for inventing the, uh, bring, uh, uh, being the founder of the XPRIZE Foundation that uh, basically. Um, said, you know, he was very inspired by Charles Lindbergh trying to fly across the Atlantic Ocean to win $26,000 in prize money in those days, which is about $326,000 today. Um, that, that, that technology, is, that, that uh, competition essentially drove down the cost of flying across the Atlantic Ocean, but within 10 years people were flying across on passenger planes. So he is actually quite shocked, but uh, he's a medical doctor from Harvard, he got a degree from MIT. So he's always wanted to go to space, so going to joining NASA wasn't an option because it was a bit short for his height. So he developed the XPRIZE and he, he went out and told the world, anybody who can make a craft that can fly 100 kilometers above uh, sea level, which is space basically, and land in 5 minutes, 48 hours, wins um, $10 million. Okay, he did this without finding a sponsor. 
He went to Branson. Branson said, I only invest in proven technology. Um, so what happened was he was in a dire strait and because somebody won. Somebody yeah, actually yeah. threw a drop and he had no money actually to, to give the guy. So uh, the Ansari family gave him five million and then Branson bought the rights to what's now known as the Space Galactic X, which hands on Google X, uh, Google's uh, complex, uh, Google Plex in there. So did they get 10 million? Or did they only get 5 million? They, went <laughs> they got 10. They and and not only that, Branson bought the rights to this, and uh, yeah. I think uh, end of next year, I think this thing will take off, and mm -hmm. it's driven down the cost of sending one astronaut by NASA at $20 million per astronaut down to 200000 and Peter has a ticket. And NASA has bought two tickets because NASA has no way to go to space right now. <laughs>